Our film starts during a funeral. After the pallbearers lower the coffin into a grave, a man in all black walks down to the gravesite as some of the women of the funeral scoff at the man, claiming he might have been drinking again. After blessing the coffin, the man grabs the shovel from the undertaker and spears it through the coffin lid. Surprisingly, you hear a scream from the coffin, followed by blood coming out and everyone runs in horror. That's when we see the woman inside it was a vampire. That's right, Hammer wasted a perfectly good female vampire on the opening credits. Next we see someone in the castle watching a couple drive down the road. When they run out of gas, the guy Gerald says he'll walk back to town to get some, leaving his wife behind. Of course, as soon as he leaves and the wind starts blowing too hard, she freaks out and runs off. Thankfully, the guy in black stops her, tells her to calm down and to get back to her car, which she reaches in time for Gerald to get back with a tow horse. They eventually get towed back to town where they rent a room for the night in a very sketchy bed and breakfast where it's pretty clear no one has stayed there in some time. The guy at the inn seems cool and is excited to have them there, realizing they must be newlyweds, but the woman is pretty frigid. He tells her to try to forget. Later on, the couple get a message from someone named Dr. Ravna, i.e. the guy who was eyeing the wife inviting them to the castle for dinner. The innkeeper tells them what an honor it is to get that info and talks them into going. When they get there, Dr. Revna gets some cool points for being very open about how he knew they were there, even though he spends a lot of the time staring at the wife, who's introduced as Marianne Harcourt. As the Harcourts are getting introduced to the rest of the Revna family, a young girl sneaks out of the house and heads to the cemetery. She digs up the grave, talking about how the person in it is missed, up until she reaches the shovel. The guy in black grabs her, and they begin to struggle up until she fangs out and bites the guy in the wrist. She then walks away looking very proud of herself before sneaking back into the house. Back with the rest of the Revnas, Dr. Revna drones on and on about all the stuff he owns like he's a rapper before his daughter tells him to knock it off. He then has his son play piano for them. Back with the guy in black, he tends to his vampire bites by burning it before he passes out from the pain. Meanwhile, Marianne goes into somewhat of a trance while Carl Revna plays the piano, so Gerald decides they should leave. The doctor sends his carriage to take them back to the hotel and lets them know he'll get the gas for their car for them tomorrow. After they leave, the daughter Sabina asks why the doctor let them go. He says without gas, they can't go anywhere unless he says so. When they get back, the Harcourts overhear the woman in the room and they go over and see her crying looking at a photo. Marianne the next day decides to go snooping around through her things and finds the picture she was crying over was the vampire girl we saw at the Ravnas. We find out her name is Tanya and she's 14. Gerald then decides to confront the guy with the black hat whose name is Professor Zimmer who is also staying at the hotel. Zimmer basically tells him to shove off and not ask questions. Later, the Ravna kids show up at the hotel and tells the Harcourts the fuel for their car won't be there until Sunday and invites them over to their castle for a party. As the Harcourts agree, Professor Zimmer shows up and tells Ravnas the weather is improving, so they take off in a hurry, most likely to avoid the sun. We then see the Harcourts getting dressed in the fancy clothes the Ravnas let them borrow, and Anna was actually nice to Marianne for 10 seconds before Marianne ruins it by bringing up Tanya, making her cry again. Marianne definitely has some boundary issues and has never been told something was none of her business. I don't think I mentioned that it was also her fault they ran out of gas in the first place. Anyway, we find out that it's a costume ball, and after a bunch of scenes of Marianne Harcourt and Carl Ravner dancing so much I was getting dizzy, we finally get back to the plot. In this case, Carl goes and changes his mask to look like Gerald, and Marianne blindly follows him up the steps until she gets locked in a room. She opens a curtain and sees Dr. Revna getting a transfusion and freaks out. Meanwhile, the real Gerald is off getting drunk with Sabina. Back with Marianne, Dr. Revna goes to her, fangs out, and hypnotizes her, which not sure why he didn't do that day one since the Harcourts weren't exactly screaming to leave. Dr. Revna then bites Marianne. Gerald, on the other hand, gets roofied by Sabina and hilariously passes out while hitting on her. The party goes from fancy costume ball to creepy cult meeting rather quickly and Dr. Revna introduces Marianne to all the other cultists as the newest disciple. Back with Gerald, apparently they didn't even try to lock the guy up. He tries to ask Carl where Marianne is, and Carl acts as if Marianne didn't exist. Gerald is pretty pathetic here and eventually gets thrown out. Then again, he didn't even get anything out of it that night, so I get it. I mean, even Dracula's male victims got some in his castle before being locked up, and it's not like Sabina wasn't hot. Gerald, after getting knocked out by a carriage, wakes up in the inn with a hangover, screaming about Marianne, and even Bruno the innkeeper does the she didn't exist shtick with all her clothes being gone. The police also won't do anything because the Revnas have money. 
Eventually, he finally goes to Zimmer, who tells him what's really going on, including the story of his daughter becoming a vampire and the Revenants being responsible. Gerald wants to go to the castle and get Marianne, but Zimmer drugs him and tells him they'll go after Dark, which seems like the opposite of how you would want to do that. After Dark, Gerald heads to the castle alone and breaks in. He heads into Tanya's room, which I'm not sure how he would know she was there, considering this is only the second time she's been in the movie. Anyway, he tells her that he'll save her if she takes him to where Marianne is being hidden. She takes him into a room where Dr. Revna is waiting for him. Carl and the house caretaker then grab Gerald and Dr. Revna has Sabina go get Marianne. When she comes in, she is in a trance, like state and wants nothing to do with Gerald and even spits in his face. The doctor then sticks Tanya on him. She goes to bite him, but he frees his hands which were seemingly only tied together with a necktie. He then makes a cross out of his blood that was left after Tanya scratched him. Hits the caretaker with a stool and escapes with Marianne and Dr. Zimmer. When the caretaker chases them outside, Gerald kills him via knocking a statue onto him. Zimmer then keeps the others in the castle by marking the doors with crosses. Zimmer sends Bruno, the innkeeper, to send a message to the authorities while he prepares Gerald for some type of ceremony to destroy all the vampires. When we see the cult, they're fussing at each other, upset about being trapped in the castle. As Zimmer is doing his chant, Gerald heads to go check on Marianne, who has escaped. We see her walking through the woods with Gerald and the priest closing in, though clearly not very fast as she's not running. Zimmer eventually gets done with his chant, which makes it super windy, which freaks out the cult. The priest and Gerald catch up to and grab Marianne. We then see that the chant caused a bunch of bats to come in and attack the cult, resulting in the closest thing to TNA you'll get in the film, as the bats seem to only feed on women if they're showing legs. The film ends with us seeing that the cult is now dead and Marianne is freed of her spell. Thanks for watching. If you like these recasts, please leave a like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to know every time I update. There is now an option to be a channel member where you'll get access to exclusive recaps from late night vampire catalogs like Showtime, Cinemax After Dark, USA Up All Night, and much more. If you want to help my channel grow, please check out my Patreon where members can get exclusive content that can't be uploaded on YouTube along with download options. Link is in the description.